This LOS is calculate and interpret the cost of debt capital using the yield to maturity approach and the debt rating approach. Costs of the different sources of capital. Cost of debt, and we're looking at the yield to maturity approach. The yield to maturity is the annual return that an investor earns on a bond if the investor purchased the bond today and holds it until maturity. So I said this is a flash forward really to the introduction to fixed income valuation where there's two LOSs here. One is to calculate a bond's price given a market discount rate. In this case, we're calculating the discount rate given the price, okay? And B is identify the relationships amongst a bond's price, coupon rate, maturity, and the market discount rate, which is the yield to maturity, okay? So it's the market discount rate that we calculate, and that is the yield to maturity. To calculate a company's cost of debt using yield to maturity, we are simply calculating the IOI on a bond. As shown, we will see that again later in fixed income. So continuing with the cost of debt yield to maturity approach, we're going to look at an example where we calculate the after-tax cost of debt. So XYZ Industries issues a bond to finance a new project. It offers a 10-year, 5% semi-annual coupon bond. Upon issue, the bond sells at 1020 so it's sold at a premium. What is XYZ's before-tax cost of debt? If XYZ's marginal tax rate is 40%, what is XYZ's after-tax cost of debt? So we're gonna solve this on the financial calculator and we're solving for IOI. So just a little bit of a calculator review. I'll bring up my uh, calculator. So we can see we're gonna be using the time value of money functionality again to calculate the yield or uh, price of a bond. So again, uh, we've got the keys, future value and present value. One of these must be negative. Payment equals the periodic payment. For a bond, that's the coupon payment. It never changes. And then we have the IY, which is what we're calculating for the cost of debt, the yield to maturity approach. And N is the number of periods. If it's semi-annual, then we have to check our parameters. We're going to check the second PY. Well, I have that as annual because I was working on a previous uh, problem before. I'm going to change that to two and hit enter. And that's what we need to do for a semi-annual bond. We're just going to check it periods per year Two equals semi-annual. Then N is going to be the number of periods. IY is what we're typically solving for, for the yield to maturity approach. Present value is the price of the bond today. Payment is the coupon payment and future value is the face value of the bond that I'm gonna get back uh, on maturity. So this slide is just giving some more calculator tips, okay? So I'm just gonna bring the calculator up again. So the first thing that we do is we can clear the time value of money, um, any data that's in there. So again, you can do second, and then see above the uh, uh, future value is the clear time value of money, and that'll clear everything. Or you just make sure that you re-enter every field, okay? The second one is to set the two parameters for the question. Always check and set the PY and check your beginning and end. You may have done an annuity question, annuity, uh, ordinary annuity or an ordinary uh, or, uh, annuity due, and you might have had your calculated in the beginning mode. So there's always two parameters to check is second PY to see what periods per year. And for semi-annual bond, it's, uh, it's uh, twice a year, two and you're always checking the uh, beginning or end mode. So again, if you were in the beginning mode, just to see how you change that is second, beginning, second, enter, and you can see, oh, I'm in the beginning mode. Oh, well, I'm calculating a bond where the coupon payment's at the end of the year. I need to change that back. Second, so we're gonna do second, begin, second, enter, hit clear, and now I'm in the ending mode because there's nothing there, okay? Uh, so that's what we need to do to toggle back between the beginning and the end. So two things always check when we're looking at bonds, check our, um, our uh, second, our, our, our uh, frequency for the payments, semi-annual or annual, and make sure that you're in the ending mode. Okay, now we're going to work through the problem and solve it on the calculator. So XYZ Industries issues a bond to finance a new project, offers a 10-year, 5% semi-annual coupon bond, Upon issue, the bond sells for 1020 What is XYZ's before-tax cost of debt? If XYZ's marginal tax rate is 40%, what is the XYZ's after-tax cost of debt? 
Okay, so I'm going to bring up the financial calculator. Again, I can do second clear time value of money, or I just make sure that I'm entering uh, all five uh, 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 parameters, okay? The next thing I'm going to check, second PUI. Yes, I'm in the semi-annual mode. That's great. And check up here that I'm not in the beginning mode, okay? So the first thing is that the N is going to equal 20, 10-year bond semi-annual. So 10 times 2 equals 20. So there's two ways. I can enter that as 20N, or recall I can do 10 years second and n and i've got 20 equals n okay i'm going to be solving for iy so i'm going to skip ahead to the present value that's 1020 i'm going to make that a negative and i'm going to make that the present value okay then with regards to our coupon payment you need to be careful here at semi-annual so what we're going to do is we're going to do a thousand on the face value times the five percent so i'm going to be getting 50 a year but i need to divide by two because it's semi-annual and I'm going to get 25. I'm going to make that the payment, okay? And then the future value is easy. That's the face value. We're going to make that the future value. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit compute and our IY, we're getting 4.746474, okay? So we can see I've got that there, 4.74647. So that's our before tax cost of debt. For after tax, just going to multiply that by one minus the tax rate. So I'm going to bring up my calculator. I can just hit equals on that, you know, to get rid of the IY. And then I can just multiply by 0.6 because I can do the 1 minus 0.4 in my head. And I'm going to have 2.847884. And that's our after-tax cost of debt, okay? So just note here that interest is entered as a percent, not as a decimal. That's just a quick calculator tip. You should know that by now. 5% interest is 5, not uh, 0.05. And in this case, we're solving for the IOI. So fairly easy to do on the calculator. Uh, by the way, we do this a lot in the fixed income. So by, uh, by, by the end of your studying process, you should be very good at calculating the uh, yield to maturity. Or if we give you the market rate, you should be able to calculate the price of the bond, which is the present value. So let's do a practice question to check our understanding. Dotcom has determined that it could issue a thousand dollar face value bonds with 8% coupon paid semi-annually and a five-year maturity at $900 per bond. So they're being sold at a discount. If Dotcom's marginal tax rate is 38%, its after-tax cost of debt is closest to A, 6.2%, B, 6.4%, or C, 6.6%. Okay, this type of question should be uh, fairly easy with a little bit of practice. So we're just going to bring up the calculator, okay? So we need to um, solve for the IY on this bond. So again, we're always going to check our parameters. Second PY, yeah, we're in uh, semi-annual, two periods per year. And so let's just solve it. It says that it's a five-year bond. So we're going to do five second and N, N equals 10, okay? So you can enter as 10N or you can do the way that I did it, five second and N. Uh, then the uh, present value, the price today, is going to be 900. We're going to make that a negative, and that's the present value, okay? And it's an 8% bond, but it's paid semi-annually. So we're going to do 1,000 times 0 0.08. That equals 80 per year, but we have to divide by 2. So each payment is worth 40. We're going to enter that as the payment. And then finally, we're going to enter 1,000 as the uh, face value, the future value, 1,000 is the future value, okay? So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna compute the IOI, and we've got 10.629852, uh, okay? So we've calculated that correctly, 10.629852, uh, but it's asking for the after tax, so we have to multiply by one minus the tax rate. So the tax rate, marginal tax rate is 38%, so one minus the marginal tax rate is uh, 0.62. So what I can do is I can just hit the equals key and I can multiply by times 0.62 and I'm getting the after tax uh, rate of 6.59 and that indeed is closest to C 6.6%. So not too difficult, just takes a little bit of practice calculating the yield to maturity on a bond. Okay, the second approach after calculating the yield to maturity, which uses the uh, time value money functionality on a calculator, is we look at the debt rating approach. When a reliable current market price for a company's debt is not available, 
The debt rating approach can be used to estimate the before tax cost of debt. Based on a company's debt rating, we estimate the before tax cost of debt by using the yield on com comparably rated bonds for maturities that closely match that of the company's existing debt. Suppose a company's capital structure includes debt with an average maturity or duration of 10 years, and we find that information in the notes to the financial statements, by the way, and the company's marginal tax rate is 40%. If the company's rating is AAA and the yield on the debt with the same debt rating and similar maturity is 5%, then the company's after cost of tax uh, of the debt, we just do the cost of the debt times one minus the tax rate. So we saw a comparable company with the same rating and similar duration is 5% times one minus the tax rate. So we've made an estimate based on the debt rating approach that this company's after tax cost of debt is 3%. So we're just gonna finish this LOS as we often do with a quick practice question. The cost of debt can be determined using the yield to maturity and the bond rating approaches. If the bond rating approach is used, the A, coupon, is the yield, B, yield is based on the interest coverage ratio, or C, the company is rated and the rating can be used to assess the credit default spread of the company's debt. So that question is not too difficult based on what we've just seen. If the bond rating approach is used, the company is rated and the rating can be used to assess the credit default spread of the company's debt. So C is correct. The bond rating approach depends on knowledge of the company's rating and can be compared with yields on bonds in the public market. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.